Hey guys, it's Matho here once again, and I'm going to go ahead and turn some incoherent rambling into a video about Diablo 4 Season 2 that started a few days ago. I played it for a few days, and uh, just give some, you know, impressions, feedback, whatever, uh, on the experience, and I guess the game as a whole at the moment. So, um, to kind of go over it, um, I went and played a Necromancer this time around again because it seems to be the class that I resonate most with for things that I can do with it and I wanted to just play Bloodlance this time around. So I previously had played maybe like, um, I don't know, a day or two of season one and then I played like a month of the launch and uh, had my fill back then. Honestly, basically I was done and uh, didn't want to play anymore. Season two was rolling around and I still didn't really feel like doing any more. Um, and season two itself wasn't really enough to bring that back, but I figured I'd jump in and test it and that's where we're at. Got to level 74 and I'm pretty much done. Um, and that's kind of the big issue. So let me just get the, get it out of the way to begin with. Um, if you've never played Diablo 4 and you were thinking of kind of playing it, something like that, you're going to get a good few weeks worth. You'll enjoy yourself and um, it'll be pretty fun. Once you're done, I think you're going to be pretty much done until they make some really big updates. Uh, and that's where I'm at. So that's kind of the issue that... Um, it is fun for a while, but once you've kind of like ticked all these boxes, there's not much reason to come back and tick any other boxes. Uh, I basically played all the classes, played the skills I wanted to play, and then that's basically it. I can't come back and play a new skill. I can't come back and play a skill I played before with a slight difference to the actual gameplay. So I basically managed to think I wanted to try something I hadn't, which was Bloodlance, and... That's basically it. The rest of the classes, the rest of the skills I'd either played or don't want to play, and thus there's nothing to really suck me back in. If you're just playing for the first time, you get to play all the classes, you get to play all the skills, um, do all the content, and like I said, it should keep you quite busy and have good fun for, I think, a good few weeks. Once that's done, um, yeah, not sure what's happening beyond there. Season 2 itself, like, all the, the patch that happened, pretty good. Like, they've got a lot of stuff that was just good quality of life. There's a lot of stuff that was um, good for the game. And then the league mechanic or the season mechanic itself is pretty fun. So the season mechanic is uh, vampiric powers, so which is, like, just a, basically additional, like, legendary powers. So your character can have an extra five... Um, extra passives that do things for your build um, but they're not too interactive you just kind of like get them as you level up and then slap it onto your build out of choosing from a few and then they just passively do a few extra things for you so like I said they do just feel kind of like extra legendary powers in a different way to like scale them enable them um, but they are limited up to level three so once you've leveled them to level three which takes I don't know a few hours like 10 to 20 hours or something to get all of you guys to level three uh, once that's happened you pretty much don't do anything with this anymore. You might just chop and change, swap them in and out. And then you don't really have to interact with the season mechanic anymore. But the season mechanic itself is quite fun. Uh, you are running around in green Helltide, literally what it is. Um, it rotates every hour from a different zone to different zone. You run around, you do green Helltide. There's lots of mobs in it. It's pretty fun to just smash through um, and enjoy yourself using your build your skills uh killing lots of things at, at once and then getting lots lots and lots and lots of uh drops from it which is almost reminiscent of d3 at this point there's just non-stop rains of rares legendaries uh the occasional unique at this point it's not super common but it is pretty common when they originally launched they wanted it to be like a real special feeling something that doesn't happen too often uh and now at this stage yeah uniques happen quite frequently um but it is fun once you like have finished the league mechanic or the season mechanic and you know essentially gotten the stuff you need out of it the blood points the blood whatever uh you don't really have much reason to do it anymore except for it just feels good and it does feel good it's probably the most monster dense area in the game so once you've kind of run out of reason to do it it does feel a bit sad because you don't really go back in and smash the best feeling content in the game. You are then tied to hell tides, which rotate every hour or some shit. Like 
you know, they'll have an hour cooldown and then you run in and do them and then, um, yeah, you can't do them for about an hour. Uh, so then that for season two, very good stuff, I suppose, uh, as far as the season mechanic. There's also a small quest chain that you do. You do a small quest chain that leads to a boss and the boss is kind of nothing. Um, very not much indeed, uh, which will then bring me to bosses. And I'll talk about bosses for a bit. So part of what they were doing for this um, big update was bringing a few extra bosses to the game, uh, like end game or uber bosses. Uh, Duriel being the only real, I think, supposedly uber boss. And then the other four or some shit uh, bosses were just end game bosses. And they were, as you'd expect, um, a bit under-tuned, a bit watered down, Duriel kind of puts up a fight, but even my level 73 character that was fairly unoptimized, fairly just whatever the fuck, uh, took him down second go. So I died once and then went in, did it a second time, and uh, pretty clean. And it's a level 100 fight, so given that it's a level 100 fight, um, there's not much left for me to scale towards. Um, and I even tried the watered down nerfed version of uber lilith on this character it is a level 73 character or well now 74 i've tried everything at 73 mind you tried it at 73 and could kind of just mechanic my way through um after enough time to get through phase one to phase two i have never seen, like done phase two or seen it so i don't know what the fuck i'm doing there and have no real intention to um grind through or watch anything to try and get it done better but as far as i can tell it seems like uber lilith is maybe like five to ten times easier on the life bar um which is what makes the fight substantially easier than before you still will take lots of damage doesn't look like the damage has really been too nerfed but the damage that she takes or her health bar seems substantially lower so it should be much easier to do um which will of course mean you run out of things to do quicker and quicker but as far as the other bosses are concerned i took them on as soon as i like entered um world tier 4 got to level 60 and then i think i took on um tier 4 varshan which um, is a little bit of a boss fight, but with pretty much all of these, they're just a little bit of boss fights and then they get outscaled hard once you've leveled up a few times and once you've um, got better gear from World Tier 4. And then they're not really anything anymore. They become very much glorified um, dungeon bosses, I suppose. So it does not really keep you two in the game, but they are something you need to farm to get bigger, better loot and um, ultimately to take on Duriel, which will give you bigger, better loot and the chance at the biggest loot. And then I suppose the only real other end game thing is Uber Lilith. So um, it's still just a bit of a treadmill, a bit of a hamster wheel. In, once you're on it, it's fun and you can kind of appreciate what it is um, for the fun value of killing stuff and getting plus green arrows and stuff. But once you're off that treadmill, once you're off that, hamster wheel it is hard to get back on and see why you are hamster wheeling and treadmilling um and that's kind of the issue there so like i said there's a lot of positive um improvements but a lot of them are just things that really should have happened on launch so dare i say the game should have like been released kind of at this state um a lot of the stuff that's fixed a lot of quality quality of life and stuff it's like strict design choices that just should have been better right from the get-go but they had to be play tested by the player base and then feedback given by the player base. It's like, yo, this is bad for some reason. Why? One of them being kind of like the mount. The mount is a positive upgrade. It is one of the um, success stories, I'd say, of this um, patch because it does feel a lot better to use now. You can actually, like, you know, turn your character normally. It goes faster than your character properly does. Um, so it actually gives you mount, you know, feeling of travel. So if we're like, you know, using our speed boost, it properly feels fast compared to before. It's a lot more intuitive. It doesn't get stuck on things. Kind of how it just should have been. Whereas when it was released, it's like, how did anyone think this was okay? I don't know. This just feels bad and it's barely any faster than what you run with. What are you doing? Um, another thing, there's now like stashes all over the map. So, you know, they designed the town to be a bit immersive and, you know, have little actual areas so you know these guys are going to be in this area these guys are going to be in that area but it's supposed to 
make you run around more and take up more of your time. And ultimately that feels bad, especially when you're trying to like grind and do things efficiently. And then they just went, oh, okay, we're here. You have a fucking stash everywhere. So there's literally like a stash next to every guy because they can't just like condense everyone or change the town layout. So now there's just a stash everywhere, which is kind of silly, but hey, it feels better, I suppose, um, to not always have to run back to a further away stash. So there's lots of good positive quality of life, but things that probably should have happened to begin with. One of the things that I'm still kind of gripped about and honestly got worse is the consumable tab. Your consumable tab is where your elixirs go, which are pretty powerful and fairly usable and you want them for the um, experience boost. So you do want them on hand. Um, it's also where your maps go, your nightmare dungeons. Um, and I... Honestly, I haven't even run any Nightmare Dungeons this um, season, and yet they're still like cluttering up a bit. And then it's also now where your materials for bosses and stuff go. So previously it was your maps and your elixirs, and it already felt kind of small and janked to interact with and un uh, uncomfortable and now there's like an extra fucking 10 boss materials or something that sit with you at all times taking up spots um, or you have to micromanage them in your stash uh, it, it just got worse <laughs> like the the issue of your consumables tab somehow got worse um, and this is without having run a nightmare dungeon which um, is another problem of its own so once like I said I was off that hamster wheel I can't really get back on because I just do not like the nightmare dungeon that much um, I had to do a few dungeons for like progress in the campaign and uh for trio whispers and stuff and pretty much every dungeon i ran was still like huge amounts of backtrack and pick up thing and put it on pedestal and it just felt bad and then by the time i was like getting to you know maybe needing to run nightmare dungeons i'd rather just do the um hell tides or the season mechanic so i was just killing stuff out there doing trio whispers and um hell tides and stuff so I, I haven't done a nightmare dungeon and I haven't upgraded a single glyph, which is another thing I don't really like doing that much, upgrading glyphs. So I haven't touched the nightmare dungeons and the glyph upgrades just because fuck it. I'm not very invested and I did not bother doing it. Um, so to that point as well, um, one of the other things I was just going to say that I don't particularly um, like that has happened and that is, um, I think actually maybe related to a point just before where something that kind of got worse, it's not necessarily that it got worse, it is the problem got completely 180'd. So gold was a bit of a stopgap for being able to roll things off of your occultist, your, um, you know, item person. And nowadays it's less of a stopgap and the materials that you need to actually roll things. So if we um, just change ourselves, the materials are more of the stopgap. So they've basically just fully reversed the problem because gold just gets shat out from Whispers, um, Tree of Whispers. And by level 40, where previously you would have had like 100,000 gold, now you've got like fucking 20 million. Um, instead, you have all the gold, and they've even reduced the price on re-rolling with gold. You've got all the gold you'll ever need, but now the cost of the materials is much more um, what limits you on re-rolling an item. So you're still kind of stuck not being able to re-roll items you want, especially during the leveling, except for like one or two times, and then you go, oh, can't afford to do that anymore. Um, and it's just fully flipped the problem because you run out of the materials you need, uh, and then you are forced into doing things like... Um, Helltide at this stage to upgrade those items uh, and especially if you don't really like Helltide, if you don't like um, farming it too much uh, then you kind of fucked because you just have to um, and it's also rotational and it's you know down for an hour every two hours or some shit uh, and the other thing that feels bad there is you need Helltide to farm one of the bosses so you need Helltide to kill a certain boss that drops a certain thing for Duriel. So when I wanted to make a quick video of Duriel and um, actually get it done, I was done with the game, but I'm like, okay, I should farm Duriel. Um, I am almost there. What do I still need? I check. I'm like, okay, I need this boss fragment. It comes from Helltide. Um, Helltide's not up. And I just fucking sat there like an idiot waiting to play my video game. That's a bit of an issue, but um, I guess that's a separate thing altogether. Uh, so farming for those bosses is something, but it's um, not always the best feeling thing, especially if it's gated content um, behind a certain time frame. But there are still lots of issues with the occultist 
um, with the re-rolls, with materials and stuff. Like I said, for the most part, the game is on the whole a lot better, but it's still got lots of its core issues. And it's interesting that a lot of people say um, Diablo 4 at its core is real good. It's a good base core. You can build from that. It actually feels the opposite to me. Diablo 4 is a shiny... Um, shiny product on the outside its core is actually kind of what's wrong and that is like the item system the loot grind uh the skill set you know the skill system um that whole core thing is is just kind of fucked and hard to repair uh and it's just maybe something we wait for from an expansion or so uh because skills there's very quite limited of them like i said the things that keep me coming back to a poe league you know time and time again is new skills, new ways to interact with skills, new builds that I can keep doing. Um, and just even, you know, there's like a hundred different skills and there's like 20 different ways you can build each skill. And even if I've done a skill before, uh, with some new stuff that happens, um, or just new ideas, I can come back to a PeeWee league and be like, I want to play that skill I've done before, but in a completely different way, let's fucking go. I'm excited to do it again. With D4, once I've played all the skills, I've basically played them and there's no real other way to do them and there's very limited amounts of them. Like, thank God at this point that they're pretty much all viable, but, uh, you know, there's just not that many of them to interact with and there's not that many of them to um, customize with. You're basically told how to play each one you build towards it with your powers, your uniques and stuff, and then you play that skill the way they wanted you to, and then you're done. And I don't know how you can fix that to incorporate um, new ways of doing it without just a whole revamp, which will be maybe like the expansion or something. Uh, and then, like I said, the other thing at its core is the itemization, the um, gear system as has been very much complained about by lots of people uh it's just stats are kind of boring stats are kind of um not very impactful they change the problem from vulnerability and crit damage being the best thing to just being another thing so you know you were chasing vulnerability you were chasing crit damage you'd see it on your item and you'd be like hell yeah vulnerable crit damage um huge extra power to my character to now being like just give me fucking anything and as long as it's an extra damage upgrade so you just get items you look for certain fucking pieces of damage and then you stack them all together and then you just have a big pile of damage in the end and that's just how it works now um but then yeah the itemization on top of that um finding stuff is pretty boring like you just see lots of stuff on the ground still. It's just lots of rares or legendaries. You don't know what you've got until you open the old fucking encyclopedia, have a look at the, you know, look at every single item, compare it and go, okay, this one's got plus that, plus this. So it's maybe good, maybe bad. And uh, it's just not very exciting to grind for items or find them. And it's just incremental increases and in values. Um, and yeah, in a game about loot hunt, it's not very loot hunty. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, what I'll say, it sounds kind of negative, um, but it's just that I'm basically done with the game after having played it for like a month. And I don't think um, it's a game that's really too replayable without massive changes from patch to patch or from season to season. So it will be fun for you if you haven't played it and it will be fun for a decent amount of time. But once you're done, I think you're going to be pretty fucking done um, and it'll be hard to get back into it. But um, maybe we'll see bigger, better, cooler things in the future. At this stage, level 73 is about as far as I can go, level 74. Um, and there's no real reason for me to keep going. So I'm going to go back to PoE or something else um, and maybe do a season three. But I wasn't too keen on season two. I just figured I'd try it out because um, new season mechanic and it looked at least like something. Um, but if season three doesn't bring too much else fanciness, I probably won't come back for it uh, in three months time. There's just not enough to come back to for me um, if PoE is feeling so good, which it currently is. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.